Welcome to Bud Burst. We're about to look at how one can create a classroom, a Bud Burst classroom. So the first thing we need to do, of course, is to log in. So I'm logging in with my academic identity. and scrolling down to click on login. All right, here's my uh, identity. I don't have a picture up yet, but I can do that whenever I want by going to my account and editing it. What I want to do today is look at classrooms. So let's take a look at classrooms. I currently have one classroom, but let's go through the process of creating a new classroom. I want to be clear that this does not necessarily need to be an academic activity. You could also use a classroom for perhaps a group of, um, of volunteers at a local uh, nature center or whatever your organization is that is making observations about phenology. We click on new and have a form to fill out. We've got a few things that we need to add here. Um, so what is the name of the class? If you um, have a number of classes, you're going to want to be sure that you distinguish them in some way. And if you're going to be using Budburst Classroom uh, next year or the year after, or if you have already used it once, um, let's start with the year. So I'm just going to say 20, to be brief, because that's what year it is right now. And then I'm going to give the grade number. So let's say I'm working with a sixth grade this year. And um, if that's my only class, then I would just leave it like that. But if I were a science teacher moving from class to class, you might need to have another differentiation. So a naming convention that is appropriate for what you're doing. So I'm just going to say that this one is um, St. Mary's. This is the sixth grade class. At St. Mary's. And we can optionally say St. Mary's again or not. We're going to identify what grade we're le level we're at. Notice that we also have the opportunity to do other. This would be for that nature center group, for instance. And then you can talk about who, it, who that is. Give us a brief description. Notice that we have a little scrolling to do here. So we're going to, now that we've got it named, we are going to identify what plants and locations um, our students are going to be working in or our group is going to be working in. So there are two ways of doing this. You can see that uh, we have a paired plants at locations, which means that we have not only the location, but the specific plants. So particularly if you're working on a um, with a research garden, for instance, if you're working with the Budburst nativars, you're going to want to name each of your plants and identify where that plant is. Um, if you're not, if you're working with unpaired plants and locations, multiple locations um, and specific species, um, this might be if your class is at home um, under COVID-19 issues, um, this might be what you want to do identify a few plants that are going to be blooming now and in the near future in your area, and then have the students tell you where those locations are so that you can put down the location. So let's just start with some species. Um, we click on add a species and add a plant, and you'll notice that our uh, plants are in alphabetical order, but you'll also notice that we have about 400 plants, that's a lot of plants. So just start typing in what you want. So I'm gonna say I want a red bud. And here we have the Eastern red bud. And I'm going to save that. 
And now we have the eastern redbud in our area here. You'll notice that I can edit that if I need to. Maybe I wanted a western redbud. Um, or I can delete it, and I'm not going to dawdle over that symbol. Um, so where are the students going to make their observations? So we might already have some locations. If you do, if you've already added some, you might have them here. Um, I actually have an eastern redbud outside my kitchen window, so I'm just going to add that location. To create a classroom, you do need to have a location. Um, if you click to save your classroom and you don't have a location identified, um, it will send you back. Um, so put in a location. You might just want to put in the location of your school um, as kind of an option. You can actually, once you have several locations, you can delete it. This delete button, the trash can, will not show up again once someone has um, placed an observation. So you can edit this, you can delete it um, up until someone adds an observation about that plant or at that location. And you'll notice you can add multiple locations and multiple species. Our classroom system was set up um, to maintain the um, confidentiality of our students. And so you're going to create your students um, an account, a mini account that is not tied to any particular email except yours as the, as the um, owner of this classroom. So we're going to create, again, we're going to think about naming conventions because if you have 20 students and you have three classes, you are going to have a lot of students. Again, if you're using this in multiple years, if you've used it before or if you're going to use it next year, you might want to start out each of your classes with the year. So I'm going to be 20 and then maybe the first initial of the last name. You'll see that I've used this naming convention before. So um, let's use, um, we'll do an N uh, for last name being Nova, perhaps, and then uh, first name. I'm using all lowercase. Uh, if you do end up capitalizing, um, our system will lowercase it. So you don't, uh, so you might as well just save yourself that, that move. Okay, and then I'm going to hit return and it will automatically show up. So there is the new name. And you'll know, whoops, you'll notice that it has this addition, the underscore, and 34383 is the ID that has been given to me at my academic address. So I'm going to save that person, and now I have a student. I can save this classroom. Scroll down one more time. And as you can see, I now have sixth grade at St. Mary's. We have Eastern Redbud. We have a location, which is outside my kitchen window. And we have a student. I can, in fact, go and I can edit this. So if I am asking my students, for instance, what their locations are, uh, they might be in their backyard, it might be local parks, it might be just down the street. Um, you're going to want to ask your students where that location is. You can now add that location. So I'm going to do this and I'm going to say, um, let's start a new location. Let's see if I will find it. All right, that one's not going to do it. 
um, I need to add the new location. I did that wrong. And it pops up actually. So here is a local location um, near where I live in Chicago. And we can get a little bit closer. This is a park. And I happen to know that it has um, some native plants right about up here. So that's where um, that student is going to be looking. So I'm going to save that site. I'm going to name it Loyola Park. Or again, if I'm having students do something uh, in particular, this might be, um, oops. I might name it so that I know who it was that gave me that address. So that again would be my new student. And save the classroom one more time. And that is how you create a classroom.